I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and co-owner of PurePleasureShop.com. I'm April, VP of the cutting-edge sex toy company, Hot Octopus, and I dedicate my life to the business of sex. We are on a mission to teach you how to have hot sex, deep intimacy, and how to make your own rules for who you are as a sexual being. Welcome Welcome to to the the Shameless Sex Revolution. Don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Well, hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Happy Friday. If you're listening to this to the day that this is coming out. Oh, there's Perry. He's already growling at someone out the window. <laughs> Hello. Sounds about right. There's some um, construction humans out here and we're hoping they don't uh, whip out the jackhammer. The jackhammer, hammer, which is how I woke up. The jackhammer is good sometimes. You got a jackhammer this morning? We're in the bedroom, but... What kind of jackhammer did you get? The uh, kind that is in penetrating sh- cement. <laughs> <laughs> not, not your pussy. Not my pussy. Not your pussy. Oh, the, there was a lovely porn star man, human, uh, named Jackhammer. He actually Amy's passed away last good. year. Rest in peace. Who? Jackhammer. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Jackhammer? My mom. Oh, oh! I was like, wait, I'm confused. I, I'm whispering. Amy, so you were about also just talking about going to coerce the coerce construction. Them. I was going to say folks maybe we ask your them, boobs. Yeah, to postpone the jackhammering by. Just saying, wait twenty minutes. I'll flash you these tatas in twenty minutes if you don't jackhammer for twenty minutes, please. But uh, looks like we're good so far. So, well, this will be our last Friday release. I know. I, well, we have we'll have the occasional bonus on Friday, but yes, we are going back down to one episode a week on Tuesdays. See you next Tuesdays. See you only on Tuesdays, not next Friday. But we could do fuckable Fridays. Ooh, that would be the bonus episodes. And yeah. you know, for those of you who've been huge fans of the two episodes a week, we love you and um, we appreciate you loving us. And who knows, we might bring it back. Uh, should shelter in place get a little <laughs> intense again? It's kind of up in the air at this yeah. point. It's confusing. It's like the stock on. market. Yeah, it it just rises and falls, and you just don't know what's going to happen. Like Bitcoin, like Bitcoin. <laughs> We're living the Bitcoin life here. Yeah, that's right. I was on my dentist today, and he was like, "Yeah, I think it's just going to be another like twelve to eighteen months of this insanity, but we got this." Well, like, P.S. Uh, which reminds me, speaking of the dentist, I had a dentist appointment in March, and it's kind of frustrating because they're all booked through October. Oh. So it's like I haven't had a teeth cleaning in forever. And so if this all then you might have to wait longer. Yeah. yeah. What am I going to get my teeth clean in 2025? Or I'm going to have to go to like Mexico to go get my teeth cleaned. You have like eight cavities. Yeah. Shit. Come back with COVID and no teeth. <laughs> no, let's not do that. <laughs> all right. So this is a happy episode. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and like every, all the past episodes, I guess, haven't been that happy considering um, I think my, fairly my state. Happy. Fairly happy. I want to be more than fairly happy. Yeah. I'm mock fairly happy um so okay so this episode is on something called sexercise uh it should be trademarked by dr jason carp phd uh and he in this episode talks about sexercise if you're not wondering what that is what that means you'll find uh, out tune in to listen uh and just so you know he didn't have a microphone so just the sound um on his end might not be like golden uh but there's not much we could do about it so just bear with us if this is your first time tuning in we have other episodes with better sound um, um before we do a sex question i'll give you all just a quick update on my life <laughs> my life that's always evolving um so uh, just a just a very quick update with the the breakup heartache episode and then had the uh, episode last two episodes and things have been changing and shifting and just one thing i want to share my advice to others and what I was going through with what the information that I had about, um, you know, what felt like the, the, the end of this relationship was that, you know, I need to let go and move on and do everything in my power to just, um, kind of move forward and through all the emotions and kind of move on without the, you know, hope of the, this person um, being, 
my partner in the future, which is what I've done in the past. And it's, it's what I've had to do in the past too, because ultimately in those past relationships, there was this inner knowing, this deeper knowing that there was a lot of other problems in our relationship too, that the deep down actually these past partners um, may have not been the best for me or, or fully aligned with me. Um, and sometimes I couldn't even choose that because of my attachment wounding. I felt like I was under a spell with these past partners. In this case, it feels different. Um, and I'm not going to go too deep into the story, but just uh, just an update of this new revelation is I'm in this new place that I haven't been before where um, it really does feel like the obstacle is just time and time for um, my uh, ex-partner, partner person uh, to to heal from a 20-year relationship that he got out of pretty much right before we started dating. And... Um, and so in it, I, there still is like so much love and alignment. And so I'm in this new place, just more of the story, keeping it short, this new place of um, honoring what's really, really, really true for me and what feels like it's really true for him too is, um, is that there is love and connection. There's deep love and deep connection. And that is, is true and that there's you know hope in both of us for... Um, some sort of future, but that it needs time and, and space. And um, so I'm choosing this new and place instead of like, I'm going to rid them out of my system and and do all the therapy to get over. I'm still going to do all the therapy, everyone. Still doing that, working on my own stuff. But I'm um, choosing to um, believe and honor love and give time and space. And actually, it reminds me of something that I want to read to you. And I decided, April, we need to get John Wineland, Wineland on our show. If anyone's ever heard of John Wineland before... Um, He posted this thing today. He says, love is not ownership. If you need your partner to give up something they love so that you feel safe, then check yourself. And he goes on to talk about that part of love is allowing your partners to do what makes them happy or what they need. Even if it makes them happy, it takes them away from you for for a short period of time. He posted that this morning. I was like, fuck you, John Wayne. That's good. (laughs) You're listening to me. That's very good. Um, So anyways, and there's always always a risk, but you know, my heart is already... um, you know, hurting. So I'm, I am very well supported and that's my latest update and it could change any minute. So bear with me, everyone. Like the stock market in COVID. And Amy's Bitcoin. Like <laughs> We're going to add that to the, to the roster. Oh uh, yeah. So. I'm just even keeled, Amy. Always even. That's just not true. kidding. <laughs> I just like to sometimes keep things for my own. Well, you're still, I process. Yeah, you're still evaluating. Yeah. You're in still an evaluation phase, which you shared on that same episode, the breakup and yeah. headache episode too. So yeah. we're can be a long process. There's this other thing I got. I've received so many emails from people who listen to that episode, like sending me their love, their own stories yeah. about what they've been through. And they, you know, said one of them was like, "You don't need to know all the answers right now." And we're so sad on needing, I'm feeling safe, like it will give us the safety. But really, we don't know all the answers. We actually never knew all the answers because things are always changing. Yeah. Well, it's survival as well. You just want to protect yourself and. And patience is so Move hard. on and be yeah. like, I'm done. I'm going to yeah. move on and find the next thing. Yeah. Whether then, that might not be a human, but just the next thing, whether it's a trip or a... But then you might be bypassing the, op- the opportunity for the work there that's available too. Yeah. So I get it. I get, the, I get all the elements. Are you ready for a sex question? chip yeah. All right. Here we go. This is a sex question from Anonymous. I have an eight-year-old son, and I still have that mom pouch. After a horrendous divorce with his father, I lost 65 pounds in a matter of four months, leaving me very thin, and I loved it. It happened, of course, due to stress and his affair. Okay, now fast forward two years later. I'm happier, have gained a few pounds back, and I'm dating a doctor. He's amazing, and we absolutely love each other. He's not perfect by all means. I think this person, she said that he's 27 years older than her, Mm. and that's not why she's saying he's not perfect by all means. Uh, But I just love every inch of him but I don't feel the same about myself. I know he's been with other women who were way better looking than me. That's her feeling. And I should be stoked that he has chosen me, but I just cannot seem to let my body insecurities go. My insecurities is my soft jello like stomach and saggy skin in my lower belly. And I try to cover up all the time, but he loves to see me fully naked. And I just cringe every time and don't enjoy myself at all. I work out and eat healthy, but it doesn't seem to get any smaller. Please help me with some advice on how to let that go. This is so common for folks, whether it's post childbirth or stress or people have had it since they were kids. You know, this idea that I don't like my body, body dysmorphia or um, a lack of 
self love for the body. It's, um, and then it gets you in your head. And when you're in a sexual experience mm-hmm. with someone else, you get in your head and then it kind of can take away from your orgasm and experiencing the pleasure. Yeah, and connection. And I think it's amazing that this person, this doctor that you've aligned with talks about how much he loves to see you naked. He's like so attracted to and, you. Yeah, that's incredible. And obviously, like we said so many times before, you're the validation piece, you're going to have to be responsible for loving yourself, even though you're getting validated. And it seems like that's still not penetrating into your brain. I think that you're going to have to figure out how to do the self love work on your own, on your own. And it's going to be looking in that mirror and saying how much you love yourself, doing some self love meditations, really finding the things that make you feel sexy, the outfit mm. that makes you feel sexy or the roller skates. I don't know, whatever makes you feel sexy, a wig, who mm. knows? Or I think focusing on the body parts or the parts of yourself that you do love instead of focusing, like staring at your, yeah. you know, your, your stomach Maybe and you your love saggy your skin. Maybe you love your hands. Maybe yeah. You love your, your eyes. Neck, yeah. Decolletage. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, that that's really important. And uh, that concept of, uh, a, you know, this bottomless pit, this bucket with a hole in it and it's insatiable as much of the compliments, the, you know, the materials that you put in that bucket, there's a hole in it and it keeps going down because you need to repair the hole and those compliments, you know, the words of affirmation, they're not what, what, what fills it. Um, and so that's your own work. So yes, I think you ha- continue to have your partner share with you about how attracted they are to you. I would say also to share with them, I'm, and I'm assuming that you already have, but to share with them your insecurities. Uh, and and you can even share, you take the next level as it comes up along the way, instead of covering your body up, say, I'm going through this, my process of wanting to cover my body up, and then he can potentially support you in that by complimenting you or reassuring you. And um, I think like April said, there's your own your own work on, on what to do. And I think it's, it's going to be a journey. It really is going to be a journey. And part of it, I think is also, um, you know, some other advice I'd have, stop looking at mainstream media and yeah. comparing yourself to those twigs, Go twig look thin at the, the bodies. people back in the thirties and forties, even the fifties and sixties, yeah. they were skinny was not super no. important to people back then. It was so much. And I think the curvaceous, beautiful. I think all people are beautiful. And as long as you can just look in the mirror and figure out the parts, like you said, that you You really love love about yourself, Mm -hmm. or if there's a specific thing that you put on that makes you feel even more sexy. And the fact that you're working out and eating healthy is also a great endorphin and dopamine push. And and that's really important to keep doing as well. Mm -hmm. Those types of things are just helpful for balancing your, your inner happiness and, and, uh, the endorphin release as the sex exercise podcast is going to get into is important. So, and I wouldn't say this is my area of expertise, but I'm curious about when you exercise and eat healthy, if you're doing that and specifically just focusing on, I'm going to get rid of this lower belly. I'm going to get rid of this lower belly and how helpful that actually is versus I'm doing this because this feels good for me yeah. because I choose health. I choose, you know, joy and things that are, are nourishing for me. And just the more, because what this is, is, is in, you know, a neural pathway in your brain that may have been here, years, been here for a while that is rapid firing and the more you feed it by focusing on it i don't like my lower belly this is never going to change i don't yeah. look sexy enough it stays very active but the more that you practice um deterring your thoughts away from that and focusing on other things i think that can be um really helpful so yeah stop buying glamour magazine stop looking on all the Insta- i don't know if you're doing this but all the instagram and comparing yourself to all the the humans that you think you'd rather look like start focusing on these other parts of you. And one last advice, word of advice that went up uh, for me when I've had parts of my body that either have felt, um, an unhealthy meaning, like if I'm worried about my kidneys or, um, or if I've had scars or bruises or things, um, or even like with my lower belly, I've done this before with times where I'm like, I feel kind of puffy and I'm not loving this part. I've actually massaged those parts of me, uh, in, in thinking, this, this thought of that my hands are actually healing and loving this part of myself, whether I believe it or not, it's not that, Oh, I actually love this. It's that my hands do. And that uh, the energy that I'm putting into them is this loving energy that's nourishing them. Um, this has just worked for me in the past. So just some little tools that you can try, but as April said, the work starts with you. Yeah. Oh, he just ran over that cone. You're running over the cone, buddy. Oh, <laughs> oh the, the cone construction. Is- 
the construction TV down, show right calm now. down. Pile on smashed. Hey, don't, oh, is that a jackhammer? Shit. Okay, Uh-oh. read the bio. All Hurry. right, all right. Here's a bio. <laughs> a competitive runner since sixth grade, Dr. Jason Carp quickly learned how running molds us into better, more deeply conscious people, just as the miles and interval workouts mold us into faster, more enduring runners. This passion that Jason found as a kid placed him on a yellow brick road he still follows as a coach exercise psychologist, author of 10 books and 400 plus articles, speaker and educator. He is the 2011 IDEA personal trainer of the year and two-time recipient of the President's Council on Sports, Fitness and Nutrition Community Leadership Award. His Revo2 Lucian running certification has been obtained by fitness professionals and coaches in 23 countries. To learn more, visit run-fit.com. That's run-fit.com. But first... To me, mornings are made for rituals. Wake up, meditate, coffee, hopefully some sex, maybe some oats, and then it's vitamin time. And how perfect is it that our favorite vitamins are by ritual? Ritual makes vitamins for vulva owners using high-quality ingredients from reputable sources. And they even did extensive research so you know you're putting only the best in your body. My daily vitamin is about as important as my daily orgasm. But most multivitamins make me nauseous and are packed with nutrients I already get from my food. And I don't want to take nine separate vitamins to ensure I'm getting exactly what I need. Well, thankfully, I found Ritual. They put only the essential nutrients my body needs in their easy-to-digest capsule so I never get nauseous and I take one and I'm done. Daily changes really can lead to big results, so start small with your vitamin ritual today. And Ritual is offering Shameless Sex listeners 10% off your first three months. Just go to ritual.com slash shameless sex to start your ritual today. That's 10% off your first three months by going to ritual.com slash shameless sex. All right, y'all, let's get back to the show. All right, everyone, it is episode time. We are here with Dr. Queen Doctor, PhD, Jason Carp. We don't say doctor, right? It's PhD. Jason Carp, PhD, author of Sex Exercise. I actually looked at your list. You are author of many books. Um, You are also a uh, coach. You are an exercise physiologist and more. You are also a competitive runner. Uh, We always start with the same question with our guest, Jason Karp, and that is, tell us how you got to where you are today as a coach, exercise uh, physiologist, and author of many books, including Sex Exercise. Well, it all started from a race around the track in sixth grade. I was very lucky that uh, when I was a kid, I, I absolutely fell in love with the sport and with the science of athletic performance and So I was placed on the yellow brick road. I knew from the time I was a kid what field I wanted to pursue. And uh, I was relentless in pursuing that. You know, I was very particular about where I went to school. I knew even when I was in high school that I wanted to pursue a PhD in the field. And and so uh, I knew that coaching was always going to be the center of what I do. I I knew that I wanted to coach. And then things have grown from there. And I got into the writing. I had an English minor when I was in college. And and so I started writing and, and doing other things creating a certification program for coaches and and so other things have been added to the coaching over the years but but my story all started when I was 11 years old and I just I fell in love with with running and with track and field and and with uh in more in general with the, the science of athletic performance how do athletes do what they do what, what's behind the performance what's what goes into the training and, and how they're able to accomplish what they do and can you talk a little bit more about sex exercise? I know you didn't trademark it, which I think you may want to do that at some point <laughs> if it hasn't been already, because I just love that term. And also, I mean, we're going to talk more about the link between sex and exercise. Uh, but can you just tell our listeners about sex exercise? Yeah, sure. I mean, the way I come up with ideas for a book, like I, I write a lot about, you know, fitness and exercise and specifically running. But but the way I come up with ideas for books is I try to combine my background and my interest and expertise with a hole in the marketplace. I look for what's been done. I want to just write a book about something that's already been done. I mean, so many people write books, and it's like there's a million books already that say the exact same thing. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to look for well, what's needed in the marketplace. Where, where are the holes in the marketplace? And it fascinates me. For, it's been fascinating for a long time about how both exercise, running in particular, because running is like the poster boy of exercise, it's the most primal, but exercise in general and sex are like the two best expressions of who we are as animals. You know, we have to be physically active. It's what we evolved to do, specifically running. We evolved to run. 
And then, of course, we have to have sex to continue the species. There's a reason why we have this very deep urge to have sex. You know, whether it was placed there from evolution or whether it was placed there from God or a combination of the two, whatever you believe in, there's a reason why we have this incredible urge to have sex, and that is to guarantee the continuation of, of humanity. And uh, so it's just fascinating to me, these two best expressions of who we are and how similar they are. The hormonal response to both is similar and just how they're both beautiful expressions of our physical existence because the human existence is physical. You know, that's why sex feels good. There's a physical feeling to it and it's that way for a reason. And it's the same thing with exercise. You know, exercise feels good. You know, the research, some of the research I talk about in the book shows that that a lack of either exercise and sex hurts our physical health. It's so important to us as animals and to our survival as a species that if we don't exercise, it hurts our health. And if we don't have sex, it hurts our health. And so it's fascinating when you really dig into the research, the similarities between these two, two uh, expressions of who we are as animals. It's that- one thing that connects us to all other animals. All other animals they have to have sex for the same reason why we do. And, and they all exercise. They all live a physical existed is that so in your in your book you uh you say that um that uh, exercise both exercise and sex help us to feel human you know there's like this aliveness in it that they that they bring us is that what you're referring to yeah that's a big part of it that when we when we exercise and when we have sex we fulfill our destiny as physical beings we become human you know with sex we we have this connection. You know, it could be argued that, that love is our deepest emotion. And you know, we have sex in the right context with someone who we have those feelings for. We connect on a level that we don't otherwise connect. And it's the same thing with exercise. You can think of exercise, especially that all out physical efforts, like when you run as fast as you can or you do something as hard and as effortful as you can that that connects us to who we are as humans, because that is who we are. We live, everything we do, every second of every day is physical. We can't live apart from this physical existence. We're not a bunch of souls just hanging out in the air. You know, we are physical beings. Every moment of every day is physical. And so this all out physical exertion, it gets us back to who we are as animals and who we are as humans. So people that exercise together will stay together. That's very true. Yeah, oh, I mean, that's yeah, it's, the key, right? It, there. it really is. Yeah, people who sweat together, both in the bedroom and outside of the bedroom, those are the couples who connect on a See, deeper that's level, what I'm doing wrong. and they that's stay what I'm together. Doing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you're not. You're not out running with your boyfriend. <laughs> No, but pounding the pavement. I like pounding in the sheets, but the pavement hurts my joints now. When I get older, I'm like, oh, after I run, I love it. It just, it's so hard on my, uh, my hip flexors. I, I wish, like, is it true walking though? Like what, intently, like speed walking will have the same impact as running? I mean, I uh, well, not the same. I mean, the same and walking is the most popular exercise in the world and running is the second most popular. But the only problem with walking, even though it's a great exercise, it's very hard to get your heart rate up. So you don't get the same cardiovascular stimulus that you get when you run because it's hard to get your heart rate up to 80, 90 percent of max heart rate when you're just walking. Unless you're that's very why I skilled. Pump my arms, though. You yeah. Pump them. I look like total. Yeah. We're, we're like jazzercising. Amy and I walk like that. Uh, yeah. Like if you look at these like Olympic race walkers, I mean, they can walk at speeds that are phenomenal and they can get their heart rate up. They're extremely skilled at it. But the rest of the population, it's really hard to get your heart rate up so high and sustain it with just a walk. But it's still a great exercise. I mean, it's the most popular exercise in the world. I like to say, of what, what, so for, for me, and kind of bringing that, connecting the sex and the exercise, and then April saying running on pavement. I hate running on pavement. Not my jam. Um, and, and I would say I don't absolutely love running, but what running the, the way I do like running is, or jogging, I'd say, is barefoot on the sand. And there's something about it. The that, hard sand or the soft sand? The harder, not the super soft. No, no, no. Okay. The, the harder like, sand. That's boss. It's shit like right where there. the water, it was, it's already dry, but the water just covered it maybe okay. like, you know, five hours ago. And so it's now it's, it's more firm. And there's something about being barefoot and feeling the elements of the sand on my feet and being mm-hmm. outside. I can do it in a bathing suit if it's warm. 
um, you know, something about that that feels really good to me. And what I'll, I'll link that to sex is that I actually, we've answered this question before. When do I feel my sexiest is when I'm naked outside and I'm in the sun or I'm in nature. And so for me, and this is just me personally, there is this primal, um, a natural goddessy feeling that comes when mm. I'm experiencing my physical self, whether it's sexual or even having sex outside. You know, my, or either when it, if it's sexual or um, or I'm or getting exercise in this way, when I can do it in a way that feels like really connected to the elements, I I, I tap deeper into that um, more alive primal space. That's just me. Different. Yeah, yeah. Orphans too. I, you get a high from running, just like you do from sex. If it's really fun sexual experience so I, I, and that's the thing I think that's a good kind of lead in or segue to a, a question for you uh about so how does this kind of this exercise piece prior to sex increase uh response to sexual stimulation is that something that I mean Amy's mentioning it's similar is that something that is proven or that you found in your studies yeah, and so that's a big part of the book. I talk about uh, the effect of exercise on your, your sex life, and there's quite a lot of research to show that if you exercise, especially intensely, you know, literally moments before that you have sex, that that you increase your response to sexual stimulation. And it's fascinating. Some of that has to do with the hormonal response to exercise and the testosterone, you get an increase in testosterone. Some of that is the blood flow response to exercise, you get more blood flow. And uh, so, yeah, it's fascinating how that you can actually increase your response to sexual stimulation, you can increase your libido, all because of exercise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and so, uh, didn't you say you feel the sexiest when you're like sweaty, like fresh out of the gym? gym. Yeah. 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 You're like, I feel like my sexiest self probably, and probably your, your, your response to that. But then there's the issue. People want to be really clean. Like, oh, wait, I need to go take a shower and get my sweat off. But then maybe. Maybe you bypass it, like no, just get in there when you're right, all exactly. wet, and just stay dripping wet from the the, the sex too. Right, exactly. <laughs> you're gonna get sweaty anyway, right? Yeah. So yeah. instead of taking a shower, and getting sweaty again, you have to take another shower. You may as well just, you know, just you do it right yourself. after. Right? Yeah, yeah. And some people don't like, you know, they're they're afraid of sharing their own body fluids. Like I smell really strong, or or they, or they like more like clean sex. And you know, sorry to each their own of what they might be interested. in. I know some people that like sex really neat and clean. Um, and I know a lot of people were like, I want, I want your armpits. I want your, your like, don't shave your pubes. I want all of them, all the pheromones. I want you dripping, wipe it all over me to each their own. Um, I find it sexy when people are like, I want all of you there. That's me, but yeah, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. So what about, so this is about sex prior or sorry, it's extra prior to sex. What about uh, chronic exercise? How does that overall increase libido? Mostly through the hormonal response. So that you have increased testosterone. So you can think of like one workout, any one workout will increase testosterone, even in women, you know, any one workout will increase testosterone. But then when you have a succession of workouts, you know, multiple times a week, you get this, you know, it's a chronic increase in, in the hormones and testosterone and and estrogen for women, you know, estrogen is the primary driver of the sexual urge in women. And, uh, you know, so it's more of a, a chronic thing from constant exercise. Like if you just exercise one day and then that's it, you're not going to see that over time. But if you exercise on a regular basis, then you have this chronic increase in testosterone for both men and women. However, having said that, there is research to show that that huge amounts of exercise, especially endurance exercise, like if you go out and run multiple marathons and you're doing lots and lots of running all the time, that that can each actually depress libido. Mm. You know, and, and, and men, it's been shown that you can actually decrease sperm count, but it, these are extreme conditions. I mean, there are a lot of elite runners, Olympic runners who still have children, you know, their sperm is perfectly fine. And so, you know, even though the research shows that there's decreased sperm motility, which means that they're not as good swimmers, and decreased sperm count, which means that there's not as much sperm per unit of, of semen, then, uh, you know, that could potentially be an issue. But that's in the extreme case. Most people are not exercising that much, especially a lot of aerobic endurance exercise. Most people are not exercising that much that they would be, have to be worried about something like that. For the it's most part, for most people exercise will increase libido and, and increase all the things that are you know, involved in having sex. Okay, time for a quick break. 
This podcast was made possible by Uberlube. It's a luxurious silicone lubricant that enhances sex and intimacy. We receive emails from listeners who have tried Uberlube, and the feedback is unanimous. We never knew lube could be this good. It's also less likely to throw off the pH than most other lubes, and there are thousands of doctors recommending Uber Lube to their patients, whether they want to make their hot sex even hotter or for folks experiencing dryness. Uber Lube is without a doubt my favorite lube. It has no flavor, no scent, and feels absolutely amazing on my body. And it isn't just for sex. I use it to tame my hair frizzies, to prevent chafing, and I even put some in my mouth before an oral sex session. Totally ups my blowjob game. Oh, and the bottle, it's beautiful. It looks like a cosmetic product. So I just leave it out on my nightstand totally shamelessly. To learn why we think it's the best lube on the planet, check out uberlube.com and use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off plus free shipping. Again, that's uberlube.com and use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off and free shipping. This podcast was also made possible by omgs.com. OMGS is a research-based online program that teaches you all about how to pleasure the pussy. OMGS studied thousands of vulva owners to find out how they orgasm and then made beautiful animated modules and super honest short videos to give you ways to reach even more pleasure. I've been recommending OMGS to my clients for years and it's been changing their lives. We all know pleasure is fluid and ever-changing, so why not add more tools to your pleasure tool belt? OMGS is for everyone, so whether you are a vulva owner or you just love vulvas, OMGS will give you the techniques to get your O face on. There are two seasons to choose from and hundreds of gorgeous videos to explore. So go see what science says about pleasure and visit omgs.com slash shameless. That's omgs.com slash shameless to get $5 off your OMGS access. Again, omgs.com slash shameless. Go check it out. Now back to the show. And if, if you think about it, it makes complete sense to me because... It's, it's, it's like the entire picture, right? People that exercise probably feel better about themselves because they're healthier. So that increases your ability to want to connect probably with someone and, and kind of, I mean, I can just relate to that uh, because when I wasn't exercising a lot, when I was working 80 hours a week, I was definitely not feeling healthy. I wasn't eating healthy and I didn't want to have sex and I'm a very sexual person. And it was, so in, I was in my head about it. I was like, what's wrong with me? But it makes sense. And now I exercise way more. My libido is much better and I'm older. So I didn't know that would be a, a positive thing that would come getting older. I thought I would maybe lose some of my libido, but um, it makes sense. And, and that's a good reason for us all to think about some sort of movement. Maybe if you're not a runner, do some yoga or get that blood flow going and your heart rate up. Uh, is there like, is there a, this is my own personal question because is there a heart rate that means like a heart, like a BPM that you should try to get to when you exercise, which could be helpful to help increase your libido? Cause that's, I want to get there. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Well, yeah. And me okay. and everyone else. Okay. okay. Listen close. It's 182. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Damn it. <laughs> what, and what heart rate you should be at when you exercise? It completely depends on the purpose of the workout. Oh. So there's an inverse relationship between volume and intensity. So if you go on a long, easy run, the heart rate's going to necessarily have to be lower because you can't sustain as high of a heart rate for as long. But you should do both kinds of exercise. You know, the long, slow, aerobic kind of exercise and the short, fast, anaerobic kind of exercise. In terms of increasing testosterone, it's more of the higher intensity exercise that really impacts testosterone, especially for men, but also for women, just not to the same degree, because women just don't have as much testosterone as men have. But like heavy strength training has been shown to increase testosterone, and then like sprinting, that kind of you know cardiovascular type of exercise. So you should mix it up with both, the long endurance as well as the, the short, fast bursts of, of activity. Yeah, the hit training and the yeah. lit and hit. I can't remember. I'm lit. lit. I don't know. I'm lit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, can you talk about uh, exercise induced orgasm? Oh, I want one of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting. There is some research. I mean, uh, you know, in the book, I talk about Alfred Kinsey and how uh, you know the Kinsey Institute and, and how he was the first one, perhaps, to to note this in his writings about how uh, students in school 
um, have, uh, you know, sometimes during certain kinds of activities, like he talks about rope climbing and things like that and abdominal exercise that, uh, that some people more, this happens more in, in women than in men, because, you know, it is hard to get an erection while you're exercising. So this whole idea of, of exercise induced orgasm seems to be more common in women, but, uh, but yeah, it's an interesting phenomenon that during certain, and it doesn't happen to all women, you know, it's, you know, some women experience it and others don't, but, but yeah, it's interesting how even the act of exercise, at least certain kinds of exercise can actually initiate the chain of events that cause an orgasm in women. I'm thinking it's spin classes because yeah. you're just riding that mm-hmm. bike, like, ooh. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. right. And like popping your booty yeah, up. You're like, like, yeah. Here it is. Or, I have or the, the hot Pilates when you're doing the, the, the hip thrust. The hip thrust. I'm yeah. always like, this is so Call sexual. Yeah. yeah. When you're like, right. Oh. Yeah. But, or I, I've had a friend that actually on a sort of elliptical gets her often. Like something in the elliptical, oh. the movement and the way that her, her uh, kind of groin is moving in there, that she'll often feel a little turn on and, and has had an orgasm doing that too. It's not like every wow. time an orgasm, but that has led to it before. Wow. Awesome. If that happened to me at the gym, I'll have someone's like, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm having an exercise induced orgasm, everyone. Don't panic. But then it also might be more arousing because it's one of those like forbidden ones that you're having an orgasm in public. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I would I would get off more to that. Like, oh my god, I'm having an orgasm and I'm not supposed to, and it makes it even more hot. Ah <laughs> depends I mean, on wh- where I was at the gym. Yeah. I have some uh so well when I used to go to the gym. No, I have no, a no. I have a cheering section of old men that really like me over there. <laughs> I was like, what's up, dudes? What's up, handsome? I'm strutting my stuff, peacocking around over there. Um, anyway, again, this is not about me. So, <laughs> well, I w- I'm curious about, okay, so sex as exercise. And I have, uh, so I won't out my friend's name. I have a friend who <laughs> loves sex, loves a lot of sex for a, a long period of time. It was a workout for her. I think it still is. But she says, I've gotten a little more lazy. I'm a little more like hanging out on the bottom and, you know, he's doing more of the work and I'm not really getting my workout. So talking about sex as exercise, um, I think you got to be active. You know, it's not right. as you're just laying, if you're the one, you're just the, the pillow princess, princess the receiver. Um, right. but if you have any, any information t- or also tips on that, for, like for folks who want to kill two birds with one stone, I want to have sex and exercise at the same time. Obviously they need to be a little more active. Any words of wisdom or perspectives on that well yeah that's what chapter three is all about (laughs) so i tried to come up with uh, um, sex fitness positions that require some degree of fitness either for the guy or the woman or for both and then i match that up with exercises and workouts to train for those specific positions so that you can make sex your workout so that was a fun chapter to write and to do the photo shoot with a couple of models you know they loved it that we had a blast doing that photo shoot and and try to be, uh, you know, clever about, you know, what kinds of positions are realistic where you can really do what needs to be done and, you know, fit the, fit the penis where it's supposed to go. Because some of these positions, you're like, well, that's not even realistic. You're not even going to be able to do that. Yeah. So we had to call with positions where, you know, they're realistic, but they're somewhat challenging either for, like I said, either for the guy or the woman or even for both of them, you know, like the standing 69. Yeah, that's that's a tough position to do. I mean, the woman's upside down and it's, it's got all this blood flow going in her head and you got to be sure and you know, careful she doesn't get dizzy while she's giving oral sex to the guy. And then it's tough for the guy. You don't want to drop the girl. And so it requires some strength on the guy's part to hold the girl up and to hold her in that position where her head matches the, you know, where her head needs to be for the position to work. So there's a lot of positions like that. And then but you can train for those positions. So that was fun to come up with exercises that specifically train to be able to perform those positions. I always think of those. The um, assassin. The, yeah. The, the assassin. The, the cards. Where, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking about that where the person was like uh, horizontal and their, so their ass was in the face of the human that was eating the ass. <laughs> ass eating. The assassin. The assassin. <laughs> the assassin. <laughs> There's, what is it? The card? Like 52 sex position cards. Like 101 maybe. Something, but like yeah. the majority of them are like, I could not do that. That assassin was yeah. the one that I was like, that is a goal. Yeah, well, I would have done it. I will learn yeah. it. I know that this woman um, who, she's been on our podcast before and why I'm, oh, Rain DeGray. She's a, um, she does, she's a, does porn, more like kink affiliated porn. Anyways, she's, um, she taught a strap-on workshop and so she likes to have a lot of strap-on sex with penis-owning folks with 
uh, Volvo owning folks. And she says that she's like, I do not need a gym membership. Like this, <laughs> using this strap on and a lot of the move and the grinding, the thrusting, I have abs. Like it's a good workout, but she, yeah. like, she, she gives it her all for a long period of time. Um, so fun fact, everyone, you can do it with all kinds of things. Don't need a penis. You know, you can have a, you can have a silicone dick and still get a really good workout. I don't know, maybe even better because it's like this uh, appendage that you're learning to move in a whole new way. Yeah. There's a lot of really extreme positions that are hard, but like yeah. you get like back aches or even blow some of the uh, blow job positions too, where uh, for any folks that have ever like bent your head over on the bed and like had the right. angle down and yeah, it's fun to get creative. Your I want to check like, ah. yeah, your neck's all eat. Um, I want to create a book about new positions though. I think, okay. It's going to be called sex exercise too. Just <laughs> <laughs> before she gets it. Hurry, hurry. We'll, we'll co-author the second edition. There you all go. Right. Yeah. So can you tell folks out there how they can buy your book and all of your books? Actually, I know you have more than 10 and also how they can learn more about you. Yeah, well, all the books are on Amazon. Yeah, that's the most common way people buy books these days. And uh, all the books are also on my website, which is run-fit.com. And uh, all the information about me and the work that I do, the coaching that I do, that's all on my website as well. Nice. well which, are you, do you do the social medias? Are you social Yeah, media? Yeah, I'm all over social media is Dr. Jason Park. Dr. Jason, you know, it is Dr. Dr. Jason Carp. <laughs> He's on the interweb. My, on the interweb. Yeah. Yeah. My twin brother likes to joke that the PhD stands for phony doctor. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. I wanted to say this. I read in your, that your, your dedication, your book is, says for dedicate to my parents for having sex one steamy morning and making twins. I yeah. love that. Are you identical so, or fraternal twins. We're fraternal, but my mother used to love telling my brother and I the story that you know my my parents were older when they had my brother and I, and so my mother actually measured her cervical temperature because you know a lot of older women they do that so they know when is the, the right time of the month to conceive, and so my mother wanted to always make sure my brother and I knew that she planned for us. And so she measured her cervical temperature and literally one morning, you know, she took her temperature and she found out that that was like the prime time. So she nudged my father in the bed and she said, let's go, let's make twins. And that's how oh, she said yeah. twins too? my mother, my mother prayed for twin boys. She wanted to, she got exactly what she wanted. She wanted oh. twin boys and that's what she got. Were twins in your family? That's Cause so isn't that somewhat, sometimes a genetic Thing. Yeah, it usually is. It runs on the female side. So yeah, I think my mother had a set of cousins who were twins. And, okay. and now after my brother and I, my cousin has a set of twins. Oh. But uh, yeah, I think there was one set before us, like a couple of generations back. Wow. I like see. So this is why you were designed to write this book, because obviously your parents are already talking to you about sex a little bit, there, <laughs> which is awesome. And then and you were have a lot of experience in the exercise in the running world. So everyone go check out the book Sexercise. Go check out it's fit or run dash fit dot com uh, to go check out your website. Yes. And go get a bottle of margin wa- margins wine and read Sexercise and practice at the chapter same time. <laughs> three with your partner or by yourself, whatever you're into. And uh, Dr. Jason Carp, thank you for joining us and sharing your wisdom and all your sexpertise. Ooh, that I did. My pleasure. Know. This is a lot of fun. Thank you. Uh, so I did mention Margins Wine. Uh, Dr. Jason Carp said he wants to try it too. So we'll hook him up. Go to marginswine.com. Check out the newsletter. Remember that small batch boutique, beautiful wines. Amy and I have been huge fans for, I don't even know, two and a half years now. So check out why we love it so much. And to all of our listeners out there, if you go and write us a review right now on iTunes, I will personally send you something fabulous in the mail. Well, the first 10 people. How about that? I promise. Right now. Five stars. Five stars. Send it over. I'm oh, serious. You're take, it. We'll take a screenshot. How do they do it? Take a screenshot. I don't know. You? you send it first and then screenshot it and then email us at info at shameless sex. I will send you something. She just came up with that on the spot. I did offer, because yeah. I'm really encouraging people to give us reviews because somebody wrote us a review the other day that said, 
I'm 12. I'm 12. One star. <laughs> no, three stars. Oh, it was three stars. And well, we're like, uh, 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 what do we do with that? So you, those are not real if, reviews. If you don't feel like writing a big, long script. You don't have to, but I'm just encouraging you. And I will. I'll, send you something. I'll send you something. Uh, it could be a copy like of it. Sex Exercise. Who knows at this point? It's going to be a surprise. So we love you <laughs> listeners out there everywhere. Join us again next Tuesday and Friday. We'll see you next Tuesday, y'all. Ciao for now. Don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com.